Chapter 5 Sean froze and remained silent. The cameraman was inwardly sympathetic toward him. It was a pity that a good-looking man like him was suffering from facial paralysis. After Sean and Catherine were done taking pictures, they headed to the first floor to register their marriage. It was only when Sean took out his citizenship certificate that Catherine finally learned his real name, Sean Hill. However, Ethan's mother's surname was Lyons. In that case, his uncle's surname was supposed to be Lyons as well. In a daze, Catherine asked, Why is your surname Hill? Uh Uh-huh. As Sean was lowering his head to sign the documents, he did not bother to know what she meant. He casually answered, I adopted my mum's surname. Oh. Catherine finally understood. She had been filled with fear earlier, thinking that it was a case of mistaken identity. She flirted with him for the very reason that he was Ethan's uncle. However, she felt that something was somehow not right. Ten minutes later, the marriage certificates were issued. Catherine felt a twinge of sadness, but found this to be incredible at the same time. Since young, she had always assumed she would marry Ethan. Against her expectations, she married a man whom she had only met once. Here's my contact number. I have something to attend to, so I'll be leaving first. Sean jotted his number on a piece of blank paper for her before he left. Wait a minute. Catherine stopped him the moment she came back to her senses. Now that we're a married couple, we should live together. With a dull expression, he replied, I don't get used to living with anyone else. I'm your legal wife, not someone else. Even if we're going to divorce three years later, we should still live together. Shaking the marriage certificate in her hand, Catherine pouted in an attempt to gain his sympathy. I'm really miserable. Ever since my long-lost sister returned, my parents have been treating me with contempt. Now that I've been kicked out of the house, I don't have a place to stay. You can rent a place for yourself. Sean walked away with indifference. Don't abandon me, hubby! Catherine suddenly let out a howl, hooking her arm around his. I'm left with nothing but you right now! Her increasingly loud voice had attracted a lot of sidelong glances in the registry office. Pulling a long face, Sean regretted getting married to her at random. Fine. I live in Jadeite Bay. Go there on your own. Sean could not help but stomp out of the registry office. He then warned her softly. You sleep in the guest room. You're not allowed to step into my room. Secretly elated, Catherine believed that he would be the one begging her to enter his room in the future. By the way, don't disturb Fudge. Fudge? Catherine gasped. You already have a son? Sean raised his eyebrows. Take good care of him. Once he finished his sentence, he left straight away. Catherine was so shocked that she forgot to go after Sean. Although she had braced herself to marry someone she did not love, she was not at all ready to be someone's stepmother. She stood at the roadside for half an hour, picturing her conflicting future identities, namely as a stepmother and aunt. At last, she dashed into the mall to buy children's toys after glancing at Ethan's disgusting photo. A person named Fudge had to be a boy. After selecting several types of toy cars and Lego sets, she drove to Jadeite Bay. Carrying a variety of things, she took a deep breath in front of the door. She punched in the password, and the door was opened. A friendly smile spread across her face. Hi, Fudge! A fat cat with a white body and light yellow ears were seen lying on the couch lazily. It produced a cute sound in the quiet living room. Catherine blinked. Fudge? (coughs) After the fat cat stretched its body, it jumped down the couch and walked toward her legs to smell the toys that she was carrying. Uninterested, the cat returned to the couch and lay on it in an arrogant manner. Chapter 6 
Catherine was speechless. Sean should have explained this earlier. She had spent the past few hours worrying about being a stepmother. A feeling of helplessness washed over her. Despite that, the chubby cat with clean fur was adorable. She stepped forward, intending to pinch its fat cheeks, but the cat dashed into the master bedroom, the speed of lightning. The master bedroom was a place she was not yet qualified to step foot in. Catherine let out a sigh at the rejection. Then she scanned around the house that had three bedrooms and two living areas. There was a master bedroom, a guest room, and a study. The interior of the house was decorated in a minimalist, modern style, using black, white, and grey as its main colour scheme. It was pleasant to the eyes, but gave out a cold and cheerless vibe at the same time. The renovation probably did not cost much. Was this really the residence of Ethan's uncle? The man was supposed to be a successful entrepreneur. It was one thing if he chose not to live in a grand villa, but there was no sign of luxury in this place at all. Not to mention the shelves in the study room were filled with books like The Science of Law, The Law Society Gazette, and Are We Slaves to Our Genes? Something did not feel right. Could it be possible that this man was not Ethan's uncle? No, that would be impossible. Freya could be quite careless at times, but for something as serious as this, she could not possibly have made a mistake, right? The overthinking was killing Catherine. She retrieved her phone to ring her friend. Are you sure that he's Ethan's uncle? Of course. I heard it from my brother. He even had a meal with that man before. Relieved, Catherine placed a hand on her chest. <sighs> I was afraid that I married the wrong man. Oh my God! Did you actually marry him? A shriek of surprise sounded over the phone. He really showed up? Uh-huh, she replied. On the other side of the phone, Freya's eyes were welled up with tears. We promised to be each other's angels. How could you abandon me? The words were stuck in Catherine's throat. Well, the two of you should treat me to dinner at the very least. Um, nothing has really happened between us yet. Catherine summoned up the courage to explain her exchange with the man. You've got such a pretty face, but love hasn't been easy for you. Freya showed her sympathy. But don't worry, I'm sure he'll surrender to your sugar-coated bullets in no time. I believe so. After the phone call ended, Catherine dropped by the nearby supermarket. The new house was too cold and empty to be called a home. It definitely needed a new makeover. 4pm at Jennings Solicitors. Sean had just flipped open the document file when Chase Harrison stepped foot in his office. Congratulations! Should we have dinner with your new wife tonight? It's not like you don't know the real reason why I got married. Sean replied coolly without lifting his head, his eyes glued to the words on the documents. You truly are fickle. I heard that Catherine Jones is quite a beauty. Aren't you at least a little bit interested? Chase was filled with excitement. He lowered himself on the swivel office chair as he studied his friend's expression with curious eyes. Sean paused what he was doing for a split second. He recalled the woman's smooth, milky skin and her face that was as beautiful as a blooming flower. However, her shameless behaviour. He replied several seconds later. I've seen countless attractive women. Fair point. An insignificant young lady from Melbourne wouldn't stand a chance to be your wife if you weren't trying to avoid an arranged marriage set up by the elders of your family. Indeed, she's not a good match for your grand status. Chase let out a meaningful sigh. So, the famous unbeatable legend has returned. How are you adapting to working in a small place like Melbourne? It's certainly an experience to live like the poor. Chase hissed. The world is so unfair. You graduated at the same time, but you have already climbed to the top of the ladder. It all comes down to the structure of our brains. Sean replied, lifting his indifferent gaze. Chase gritted his teeth at the humiliation. 
<sighs> Forget it. I'll leave this as is. Do me a favor, and have dinner with several other solicitors at the company tonight. Hmm. Sean replied. His phone then beeped with a notification sound. He picked up his phone to see an incoming text from someone named Sean Areen. Hubby, this is Cathy. 